Hello everyone, welcome back guys. Hope you all are doing well. This is Mohammad Badrud Dujab back again with another lab. So this is going to be the second last lab of cross-site scripting vulnerability module and the level of this lab is expert and this lab really uh, is difficult. So let's go. Uh, reflected cross-site scripting protected by very strict content security policy with dangling markup attack. So in a minute we will see what is dangling markup attack. This lab using a strict CSP that blocks outgoing requests to external websites to solve the lab first perform a cross-site scripting attack that bypasses the CSP and exfiltrate the simulated victim user CSRF token by using Burp Collaborator. Um, we then need to change the simulated user's email address to this. And here there is a little mandatory thing to solve the lab that you must use the label of your vector with the word click in order to induce the simulated user to click it click it so that means there is a user on the other side who is going to click our provided link and once he click this link we need to change his email address okay and before doing all these things we also need to bypass the content security policy so that we can get his CSRF token or exfiltrate his CSRF token. The payload should look like this where click or click me or anything you put here but click word must be there to solve the lab. Now you can log into your own account using the following credential. We have one valid credential Wiener and the password is Peter. Now there is little note and that note is basically saying that uh, the lab does not want you to interact with any other out of band uh, website or system or external system. Okay, but to solve the lab, the lab is provided with the exploit server. So you can use this exploit server. And if you have professional version of Burp Suite, so you can use the Burp Collaborator. Fine. And there is a little hint again that uh, whatever email you are going to change in whole process, those email must be unique otherwise the email will not be solved uh, sorry the lab will not be solved and uh, to solve the lab we, we need to use this email address so let's go and access the lab i am already accessing the lab here you can see now let's see i'm first going to log into my account and i'm going to start the burp proxy on my browser so that all traffic go through the burp proxy so the username is Wiener and the password is Peter. Hit enter and we are logged in. Okay. So you can see uh, before uh, I try to change the email address and uh, I change it to something like this. Although once you will log in for the first time, you will get Wiener at normal user, something like this. Okay. And there is no shame. Uh, by saying that this is the third attempt I'm trying to solve this lab and the third attempt to recording uh, this lab because in first two attempts I tried a uh, bunch of things but I don't know uh, whatever response I should get from the user on the other side I'm not getting that response okay even I try to uh, use the same payload which is given into this lab but uh, nothing works I did not get any response from that so in this lab I'm going to try a different approach to solve this lab and if it is okay you are going to see or you are going to watch this video fine so uh, actually if I go to the inspect and if I see this section of email you can see there is a form okay the class of this form is login form name of this form is this and uh, to change the email it must uh, go to this endpoint and the request is going to be the post request uh, and there is one input field which is asking for the email but the interesting part here there is one hidden field also and that hidden field also contain already contain the csrf token if i change this field from uh, hidden to let's say text and hit enter then you will see here our CSRF token, right? But this is hidden. User do not need to see this, okay? Although once you try to change email, let's say 
aaa at bbb.ccc and if you try to change the email this csrf token because it is already uh, hard coded in the uh, in your form okay and automatically this random string every user will get this unique random string okay so every user have different csrf token so if i see the request for changing the email you can see this is the post request and here we have two argument or two parameters one is email and another one is csrf so if you want to change or if any user want to change the email address uh, he must specify the csrf if you do not have the csrf you cannot change your email address that's that is the first thing second thing you can see here there is a session id and this session id also unique random session id for every user okay we will come to this point later but my first purpose is to uh, show you that these parameters are being used and this is the most important one fine now what if what if i try let's say here because we know now that uh, we can change email address and all so if i say email is equal to um, let's say cyber sec radar and if we hit enter you can see whatever input we put within the email parameter we can see that here that is rendered here that means this could be the source from which we can control the input okay so this could be a source so what if let's see i'm going to inspect it again and here is the thing we have here the value so what if we terminate this form here so that the next form contains uh, rest of the csrf token value and this input field let's see uh, i'm going to show you the csrf policy so let's see if i go to the network and just uh, reload this page again okay so you can see this is the request and if you see the headers you will find here content security policy and this is very strict security content security policy uh, where the default sources for the content is self that means only from its uh, origin or its own domain it can take the content object sources is none a style source itself a script source itself that means it is not going to uh, load any string from any external uh, source image also self that means it is not going to take any image from any external source so i'm going to just demonstrate this so that you will have better idea let's see if i say um i close the uh, form there and i try image tag source is equal to uh, http colon slash slash example dot com okay and just hit enter so you can see once the page is rendered is it's trying to load an image from this source but if we see to the if we go to the console so here you will see one error content security policy and it's saying the page settings block the uh, loading of a resource at example.com so uh, we try to load an image here from example.com but it is denying because of the content security policy because uh the attribute is set or directive is directive of the image source is set to the self so it is not going to take any image from any other external sources right fine so let's see i'm going to go to the inspect again now uh this is just to show you about the content security policy but actually what i want i want to uh, i'm going back so what i want i want to terminate this form within this input field after this input field and create our own form so let's see i'm going to close that form and we will create our own form so within form i will create form same like this like this one so let's say i'm gonna say 
class is equal to login form and then i'm going to say name is equal to um my form this you can do you can give any name and then i'm going to say perform an action and within this action i want to specify uh, exploit server because exploit server we can consider it our own controlled server so whenever anyone hit this exploit server we are going to get the hit and we can see that request that it, this request is coming from somewhere we can also publish our payloads okay so this is attacker controlled server here in the action i am going to say and the method is going to be get method so it will just hit this server fine now one thing before going further one thing here which i want to explain that is dangling markup what is dangling markup so it refers to html or markup code that is left incomplete or improper terminated within the context of the generated html right so whenever a user input is directly included in the html output without the proper encoding or validation fine so it can inadvertently introduce dangling markup and if we talk about the dangling markup attack so it occurs when any untrusted user input is embedded within the web page without proper sanitization or validation okay so it allows an attacker to inject malicious markup or code into the generated html fine so this is what uh, dangling markup is all about we will see here uh, the practical approach i'm going to also put here one button like you see here there is one button which is saying uh, update email class is equal to let's say button and type is equal to submit okay very easy you we just need to follow the same thing whatever here we have okay so after submitting we are going to close it and let's say i say here click and then i'm going to close the button also wait a moment i need to actually copy this uh, from here okay so copy that and i'm going to put it here so we don't need to write every time fine so we close the existing form we create our own form name could be anything and we want to perform this action with the method get and we create one button it's submitting button whenever you click it so uh, in the button we will get the text click fine so let's go and i am going to just hit enter and let's see what gonna happen here so you can see the click button is there uh, we do not need we do not need this fine now hit enter again so you will see this one will be removed from here and now if i try to uh, inspect this click you can see here we have two forms this is the form with the lab this is the genuine form and this form is created by us this second form now within this genuine form there were two input field or two input tags one was for the email and the second was for the uh, csrf token but now after this email field we close this form this existing form and we create our one uh, you can see the method is get and we create one button so this is our button and within this form we have everything you can see it covers also the csrf uh, csrf token this is the most important thing because we wanted to put this input tag within our defined form now what will happen so suppose that once we uh, click here it will redirect us to the exploit server 
as you can see here because the action is saying to go to exploit server with the get request okay so here you can see we redirected to the exploit server and you can see here the csrf value is there fine and this is our csrf value so this is just to test whether it's working fine or not so uh, if i go to the exploit server you can see the within the body there is hello world and this is what we are seeing here now if we want to see whether uh, this request reached to this exploit server or not so if you go to the access log um, you can see this is the request that hit by us fine and this is our public ip address okay so i hope you understand this and within the same approach uh, we are going to build our payload so that when another employee or when another user is going to click this button he is going to hit this exploit server and we are going to get his csrf token within the log fine so let's go back and i'm going to build things here so first thing we do not need this one and let's see what i'm going to do is script and close the script tag fine now i want to say uh, once this script is executed i want to uh, send it to a location and the location could be this so uh, it's gonna be our um, up to here okay and put it here fine so within this there is endpoint my account and i'm not going to take id i'm just going to uh, specify here email parameter and its value is going to be this right so copy that and paste it here uh, you want it or not it's up to you so that's it this is our first payload to exfiltrate the csrf token fine so we just say go to this location to the endpoint my account we are specifying email parameter and we are terminating the genuine form and we start our own form this is fake form and it's going to uh, perform one action and the action is defining to visit this exploit server endpoint and uh, the method of this is going to be get so because we saw before the csrf input tag is here so it is going to take that as a um, parameter within the request fine so let's go back to the exploit server and i'm just going to copy this and paste it within the exploit server and we need to store this and we need to deliver this exploit to the victim so from here the process is not in front of us because we cannot see that user's action when at what time he is going to click our uh, provided click button but whenever he is going to click this button within the access log we will get the hit because once he click this button he is going to perform uh, some specific instructions provided by us okay so it will go to this location and from here it is going to uh, go to the exploit endpoint and get us the csrf so as you can see here whatever uh, ip you see here this one is our ip and we try to get uh, see our csrf token okay which was this one this is our csrf token okay and whatever ip you see here this one 10.0.4.71 this is the hit coming from different ip address or different subnet that means this is the ip address of the user who is trying to click the button which we provide 
and he is trying to accessing the exploit server slash exploit endpoint and this is the csrf value of that user and that is wonderful because i tell you one thing no shame sharing this with you guys that this is the third attempt of recording uh, i tried even the lab solution but i did not get hit from the other side from the other user fine so this is a good news and in last two attempts when i was recording this lab uh, i did not successfully reach up to this point okay so this is wonderful now you can see whenever he try to click on that link we get his csrf token so this is first thing and we are in the good position now we just need to uh, create the csrf payload post request for change email this one so if i send this request to the repeater and go to the repeater um let's just you can see this is our csrf token and this is our session cookie fine and this is the email we want to change it so let's say instead of this i'm saying test one okay and instead of this csrf token our csrf token we want to put the csrf token of the other user okay and we want to change his email so once i send this you can see it's saying uh, 400 bad request invalid csrf token why this token is correct even though it is saying invalid csrf token because this token does not match from our session cookie so that means this is very good approach every time any request is generated it is going to check both uh, like session id and the csrf token so according to the session id it is going to check the corresponding csrf token so if csrf token either csrf token or session cookie is different uh, and do not match that means it is not going to let you change the email address or send or give you the uh, correct response right so this is the thing so we have the csrf token of the other user from the other side but we do not have his session id and here the idea comes for the csrf so i mentioned in the previous lab if you remember that there are two things trust between the browser and the web server and another thing is trust of the web server to the browser okay so there is there is a very thin line difference between csrf and xss and that's why most of the time most of the people gets confused right so now what we want the request is going to automatically take his session id and how this session id will be taken from the user session so i'm going to consider the user is already logged in the other user from the other side is already logged in so if he logged in this session id is already assigned to him okay so whatever request he is going to generate this session uh, id is already attached to that request and uh, csrf token we can uh, hard coded specify for the request okay because we already have that csrf token uh, what i'm going to do here is uh, let's see i'm just going to click on my account so that the lab is not expired fine um, so i'm going to create one csrf uh, payload it is very very easy uh, in the lab it's saying uh, you need to generate that csrf proof of concept from the engagement tool but the problem is we are using community edition and engagement tools are only available within the professional version so you can see generate csrf poc proof of concept uh, so for this lab we are going to write this script from our own so how we are going to do this uh, is like like this so let's see uh, here HTML here 
slash HTML. Then we have body and here we have slash body. So we are basically creating one page HTML page and all the information within this page is going to be loaded in the form and the form is going to be submitted because the user is already logged in. So once this request is made by the user, so that session ID is already pinned within the request. Okay. So let's see within this, I'm going to specify our form and here we are going to close our form. So form, let's say we need one action and uh, uh, we need to specify the method. Okay. And this time the method is going to be post. Uh, now within this, I'm going to specify input field. So the input field, this form is basically is very, very same to this. So if you have any confusion, you can simply go to this form. Okay. Post request. This is the endpoint. We must uh, specify both of these fields. Same like this. You will see that here. So input um, first is type is equal to hidden. This is the only thing which is different from that form. We want a hidden form so that user do not see anything. Name is equal to email and value is equal to uh, what value we need to solve this lab what email we need to change this email so i'm going to copy that back here paste that second we need another input tag type is equal to same hidden name is equal to csrf and the value of this CSRF is equal to, we already have it here. So copy that and paste it here. Fine. Uh, we need to also specify the button here as input. So input type is equal to, let's say, submit and the value is equal to let's say submit uh, wait a moment i forgot to close these and here also fine and now the form is uh, completed now after this form after this form is filled i want this script to be executed so script and close this script tag Okay. And within this, what a script I want to execute? Um, first thing history, I will define this in a moment. So push state and within the push push state, we have three arguments and the last one is going to throw us to the root directory of the URL. Okay. And then I want this form to be this form to be submitted automatically. And for this purpose, I'm going to use uh, document dot form forms actually. And this form is going to be the first form. So the index value of it is zero dot submit. Okay finish and I forgot to complete this one. So this is going to be our CSRF failure. I'm going to copy this. Oh, come on, not to save control C back here, go to the exploit server. This time we don't need that. And we just need to paste this. Okay. I forget to mention what this history dot push state is doing here. This is used to modify the browser's history state and change the URL to slash this one. Okay. So, uh, this is done to hide the actual URL where the form is being submitted. Okay. So we are going to then submit the form and that's it. So I'm going to store this payload and let's deliver this 
to the victim and if everything is okay we will solve the lab but up to now we did not um let's check one more time oh come on this is the huge mistake so this url is going to be the end point copy or we can directly because change email functionality we want to use right so i'm going to the burp search burp repeater and i copy the url from there so there is uh, no chances for the error this time okay so this is change email is the end point and we want to put the post uh, request now just copy this one more time copy back here to the exploit server paste that store it and deliver the exploit to the victim and yeah the lab is solved so how that happened if i okay uh, i want to view the exploit so because the email must be unique so i just change it here i can come here and take our csrf token copy come back here and uh, go to the exploit server and i'm going to change the csrf token and now let's view this exploit and as you can see now we are wiener user and our email id gets changed the second part is although a bit easier but the first part was worst because uh, we did not get the hit from the user side to our exploit server fine so how this exploit server basically work i just want to give you a little brief or little uh, high level overview suppose here we have uh, python3 space hyphen m http and let's say this is the attacker controlled server okay this is attacker controlled server here uh, let's say if config and this is our ip address okay copy so on this ip address on this ip address this exploit server is published now if some user if any user um, try to access this this url or this server so you can see what we have we get the hit here similarly we do here in the exploit server so exploit server is our controlled server which is this and when somebody try to access that server we get the hit in the exploit server we can publish our exploit our script okay we can uh, provide the file to be downloaded so whatever we want it just uh, depend on the purpose you want to achieve so that's it for this lab if you like the content please like subscribe and share i'm going to see you in the next lab in the last lab bye